Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the tutorial series about custom world generation in the latest versions of Minecraft Java Edition. This is episode two and the main topic for today is going to be the multi-noise biome source. That is the component that controls how you can lay out biomes in your world. A very, very key feature. But before we get into that, here are some news and follow-ups. We've moved on into the snapshots for Minecraft 1.16.2. Specifically, this episode is recorded and tested on 20w29a. There are new features that we'll be getting into later in the series as well. You can now do custom biomes, custom configurations for features, custom structures, a whole boatload of stuff like that. And noise settings that we talked about last time can now be lifted out to a separate file. That file lives in worldgen slash noise settings. Speaking of that, one thing that I kind of missed a little bit in the introduction to the series is how do you even get this stuff working in a data pack? So we'll be going through that and some of you also asked for examples. So all of the example worlds that I'll be showing you in this video will be in a data pack that you can download in a link in the video description as well. Now, speaking of data packs, the data pack structure is a little bit different for these experimental world gen features, where you normally have your own namespace, followed by the type of the thing that you're editing, and then the path to your file. With the experimental world gen things, you have always Minecraft slash, and then the type of the thing that you're adding. That is followed by your own namespace, and then the path to the file that you're editing. This is a bit confusing, but you'll see it if you download that data pack in the video description. Now, let's get into the meat of it, the multi-noise biome source. We spoke about this briefly last time. It is the biome source that controls the layout of biomes in the new nether, for instance, and an extremely powerful component that you can use to lay out biomes in very intricate ways in your own dimensions. However, it is also quite tricky to wrap your head around, so we'll be trying that here. So how do you set up a multi-noise biome source? Well, the data for a multi-noise biome source is a list of biomes, and each of those biomes comes with its own climate parameters. These are five parameters called temperature, humidity, altitude, weirdness, and offset. In strictly mathematical terms, this gives you a five-dimensional parameter space, and if you like thinking about five-dimensional spaces, feel free to go ahead. But for the rest of you mortals, I'll try to explain this in a way that doesn't require you to wrap your head around the mathematical five-dimensional space concept. Let's start by thinking about these climate parameters individually. While it is tempting to think about these as a deeper meaning, they are simply noise parameters used to determine where biomes end up. So take, for instance, temperature. The temperature is decided by the game by generating a noise with something called a Perlin noise. This is a very common noise type for generating natural things in computer graphics and computer games. Here's an example of a Perlin noise. This could be a very, very zoomed out view of the temperature distribution in a Minecraft world. As you see, it's a fairly random thing, and sampling it in a given location would give you a rough value for what kind of temperature that position in the world would have. The same goes for humidity. We could add humidity to this, but its own noise, of course, it looks very similar, but the pattern is also a different random. It will not match the temperature. Mathematically speaking, the humidity values are orthogonal to the temperature. They are completely independent, and you can have both a very warm and very humid place, a very warm but very dry place, and very cold versions of both of those. There's no dependencies between these values. The same goes for altitude. You could have a place in the world that is very tall, very humid and very warm, or very deep, very dry, but still warm, and so on. The same goes for weirdness, and all of these parameters are treated exactly the same way. Then there's offset, which is a little bit different, and we'll get into that last. Generally speaking, for temperature, humidity, altitude, and weirdness, the values you are looking for are between minus one and one. It is possible to set values outside of this range, all the way down to negative two, and all the way up to positive two. But you should probably understand exactly what you're doing before you do that. So, to begin understanding this, let's start with a very simple example and just pick one of the parameters. And for that, we're gonna start with humidity. We have the space negative one to one to toy with. Let's take two biomes and space them out on this spectrum. We'll take ocean, which is obviously extremely humid, and place that at one. We'll take desert, which is obviously extremely dry, and place that at negative one. Now we have the entire scale of these things, and we can look at that in the game. 
As you can see, this is a direct representation of that type of noise. You can see the biome borders shifting, and it looks kind of natural like biome borders do in Minecraft. With the only exception that this world only has deserts and oceans. We can extend this, of course, even staying within one axis. We could say that oceans are the most wet, forests are a little bit less wet, plains are somewhere in between, savanna is a little more dry, and desert is the driest. That gives us a world with more biomes in it, and we can fly around and look at these biome borders and move our values accordingly. One interesting thing to note here is that since all of our values are exactly the same except on this one axis, we'll always find the biomes in the same order. That means as we go from being very wet to being very dry, we will always see first ocean, then forest, then plains, then savanna, and then desert. That isn't so much fun, so let's add something a little more complicated. We'll add temperature. Obviously deserts are not only very dry, they're also very hot, so we'll set temperature to 1 for that. But what is a very dry but very cold place? Well, maybe it's gravelly mountains, let's just say that for now. And then we'll go on like that. What's a cold version of the savanna? Well, maybe it's a snowy tundra. What's a cold version of the plains? Well, maybe that doesn't exist, maybe the plains is just in the middle. But maybe a warm version of the plains is the sunflower plains. What's the cold version of a forest? Maybe it's snowy taiga, and maybe taiga is in between there. And what's the warm version of a forest? Well, it's probably jungle. And then of course, for oceans, we already have all of the biomes laid out. Frozen ocean, cold ocean, ocean, lukewarm ocean, and warm ocean. Now obviously note that these are just very quick values that I threw into an example, and you would want to spend quite a lot of time tweaking these for a nice and natural looking biome distribution. But you can see how this is going. We now have a much more complex distribution of biomes, and we've just thrown some values in there. And of course we can go on with this to altitude. Well, deserts aren't very tall, but desert hills are probably taller. Badlands are probably taller still, and badland plateaus the tallest. We can throw in snowy mountains next to gravelly mountains, and normal mountains and savanna plateaus. We can have jungle hills above jungles, and wooded hills above forests, and so on. And of course for the oceans we can add all the deep ocean biomes. As you see we get a pretty diverse world, even though the extents of some of the biomes are weird. We'll talk a little more about that later. That leaves us with one parameter, and it's one that is maybe a little harder to grasp intuitively, and it's called weirdness. Well, we could say that weirdness just defines alternate versions of the same things. So, for instance, a weirder version of the savanna would be the shattered savanna. A weirder version of the taiga could be the mega taiga, or some of the modified biomes. At the very end of the scale of weirdness, probably you'll find the mushroom island biomes. So now that we have those four noise values, how does the game determine which biome goes in any given space? Well, we have these four things, so we're now in a four-dimensional space. The game has picked out random values out of four different noise maps. It now knows how warm, how wet, how tall, and how weird the position is. What the game will do is, from these values, it will find the closest biome. The biome that the most matches the values that it picked, and that's the biome that you get at that position. If we settle for fewer dimensions for a moment, we can actually graph this in something called a Voronoi diagram. Here's our example from before when we only had humidity and temperature. All points on this diagram are colored according to which biome point is the closest to that location in the graph. This means a few things are important here. If you go back and look at the noise maps, you'll see that in general, we see a whole bunch more grayscale than we do see pure white or pure black. And that means that you're more likely to get biomes that are in the middle of the spectrum than at the extremes of the spectrum. We saw this before with our world where desert became small little islands inside of savannas, for instance. One way to do something about that is to put desert lower on the values, and of course everything above the value desert will be closer than anything else. Another thing to note is that this makes every biome equally large. If we have plains and oceans, and we would like to put in beach in between, if we set beach to a value directly in between, it will cut the available biome space in half. That means the beach will take up half of the space between the ocean and the plains. This probably is not what you want, you would probably want your beaches to be a little more narrow. And that's where offset comes in. Offset is a fifth variable in this space, and in effect offset in the game is always zero. That means that setting an offset to a biome, like in this case setting an offset for the beach, will cause it to be less likely to be the nearest biome. And that means that it will have to be more purely beach-like conditions for the beach to be picked. 
Offset is a value between 0 and 1, so setting this to 1 probably means that you will never see the biome at all. Setting it to 0 means that it's equally likely as every other biome. With this in mind, I would suggest that the easiest way to deal with learning exactly how to work with the multi-noise biome source is to do essentially what I've done here. Make up an example, throw in some values, tweak them and see what effect it has in the game. While theoretically you can understand how this works, actually getting the result that you are looking for out of the game is not necessarily easy by going from theory to values. Now there are a few things we need to get into a little bit before we round off this episode. First of all is the size of the noise. Currently the noises are completely decided by the game. That means that you can't affect the overall size of biomes in any direct way at the moment. You can shift the biomes around, making one take a larger amount of space than others, but you can't make all of the biomes smaller, for instance, not without tiling the entire four-dimensional set of values, and trust me, you probably don't want to do that. The second thing is about these names. The kicker here is that these names are completely arbitrary. They're only used for biome generation, so you could for instance say the desert is the most wet thing that there is, and the game will still not generate any more water because of that. You could say that deep ocean is the top of the world in terms of altitude, and it doesn't mean that deep ocean will be any taller than it was before. These values are used only for the biome layout and nothing else, and that also means that the names are completely arbitrary. For instance, humidity is used even in the nether layout, even though there's no water in the nether at all, and nothing is humid in any sense of the world, it's just another parameter. So let's say that you were to use this multi-noise biome source to generate a world where everything was flat. You would have no use for the altitude, but you could still use the altitude parameters to generate a biome layout because you could make up an alternate interpretation of what altitude means in that case. In a world made entirely out of cake, the biome tastiness might be more interesting as a parameter than how wet it is. I don't know what kind of dimension that is, but you see the point. Of course, with the custom biome features in the latest snapshots, that also means that this is now the only way that you can mix and match these biomes. You can make an overworld dimension based off of the multi-noise biome source and place both your own biomes, custom biomes, on the climate scales and the Minecraft default built-in biomes. And that way you'll get completely natural biome generation, but some of the biomes will be your own. I hope that made some sense, feel free to download the example data pack in the link in the video description and play around with it by yourselves. That's gonna be it for this custom world generation tutorial video, next time we'll start getting into custom biomes and how those work. I hope you found this one interesting and if you did please help me out in return, leave a like and share it with your friends, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell to get notified when new episodes are out of the series. My name is Slice Time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.